Welcome back. This is Andy Tube, and this video is part three of a Singer Model 466 gear swap, uh, or changing the top gear on the vertical shaft, which we did in part two. Because we've uh, taken the gear off and turn the uh, vertical shaft and taking the timing belt off and everything when we get it back together we have to reset the timing over here of the hook point to the needle or else it's not going to sew so uh, one thing that we want to do is uh, I'm going to do is temporarily put the control panel back on and one of the reasons for this is because as part of the setting to set the timing is that the needle position left center right has to be in center okay and without this little notched uh, area in the panel it won't stay there now, if, if I move this left, center, right, and back and forth, you see the machine's positioning the needle that way. And it's not going to work properly if it's in left, or right for that matter. It needs to be in the center. So, the easiest way to do that is just to temporarily slip this panel back on and put all these little posts back in their five holes on the front of the machine and if you remember let's see we'll get this about the center if you remember that needle position uh, tends to hang up a little bit so you have to help that one through then the rest will kind of fall into place there and we'll be good so that's what we want. We want to get this back on at least temporarily and the needle position bracket in center and the stitch length um, slide control over to the left at zero. So we do not want any zigzag setting. So I've got this little protective towel laid down. I'm going to lay the machine on its back now because I want to put the timing belt back on. And I've got a couple of other things to show you here. Um, I took the hook shaft pulley off the machine to show it to you. Um, I also wanted to see there's an indentation evenly all the way around the base where the two count them two one two set screws are gonna go. And that's kind of a safety thing. Uh, there's no flat spot so we have we have two set screws at a 90 degree angle because there is no flat spot it's going to just grip that but that little indentation is if these for some odd reason I've never have it had it myself but I think it's a safety thing so if these start getting loose um, it's going to wobble and make a bracket before it comes sliding off that's why it's a little indentation there that's that's just my opinion so there you see the cogs and the slots and that matches up with the cogged belt which was a great invention to prevent slipping very very good idea and the service manual said that these set screws are size 1 8 inch but I found that 
not to be true. I couldn't get a one eighth inch um, set screw anywhere, <laughs> anywhere uh, near inside there. So this is the three thirty second. 3 slash 3 2 inch like I used over here so at least they put the same size on both of these right and uh, one of them is kinda damaged a little bit like somebody maybe used a smaller size but anyway to put the belt back on then we're, uh, we're just going to slip it here now I could, since I've got this, uh, oh by the way the set screws go on the back on this, the set screws go on the front on this. Um, I could slip the belt on to the pulley and then I could just slip, uh, get that in there between the side, I could slip the pulley right onto the hook shaft. I'll, sh I'll show you how to slip the belt on. I showed you before this slipping the belt on and off where you just pull it up on the edge slowly pull it up like that okay so you can kind of put it back on the same way. Get it on the drive pulley and then start turning it clockwise and slipping the belt and just go slowly and gently because you don't want to slice the belt with the uh, sharper edge here. Is that in lining up there? Maybe that's not all the way up. There we go. Boink. All right. And then you want to, when you get it on, you want to test it and you want to make sure that uh, the belt isn't twisted. You know, a 360 rotation. Now, uh, we're going to put the belt tensioner, if you remember taking that off. But I, I, I did want to show you that uh, how great these cog belts are because with no tension on the belt, I ran it last night <laughs> and the belt never slipped off. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to put the uh, uh, tensioner back on here. But what I want to uh, kind of mention is that when you're putting that on, if you have any doubt, it's better to have less tension than more tension. Because more tension will definitely bog it down. It, 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 it'll bind. It'll be so tight and, and the motor will have a much harder time making everything go. It's a nice little motor matched to the machine, but but look, it's not fuel injected or anything, you know. So we don't want to do anything to create binding that's going to uh, make the motor work harder. So, this side, I got to put this offset cylinder inside the nylon collar. And then I've got to put... Uh, both the collars back on. So we make a little tensioner sandwich and then we'll start putting the mounting screw. We'll get it on the plate. Then we'll get it into the cylinder. And then we'll get it through the back plate. Okay. And then that's how it goes. Like that. And we'll see if I can get it started in that mounting hole okay now one of the old singer retires guys when he would do belt tensioning he'd just start running the motor and he would start 
moving that moving that uh, um, offset up and up and putting more and more tension uh, see how that will move up and put more tension or move down that's that's how you adjust the tension so he would just start running the motor along kind of lower speed and, and then he would just start pushing pushing up on it and putting more and more tension and as soon as he heard the sound of the motor chain like that just drop down a little he would back it off until the motor seemed to run easier and that's where he would tighten it the other singer retire guy would uh, let me let me tighten this up here and uh, so it's not so loose and and uh, I'll show you here I got that pretty tight there yeah that's very tight just kind of loose enough to just loose enough to barely turn that off center what he would do is uh, have less tension and he put his finger in here okay yeah so when he felt you know there was a little bit of pressure on his finger but not too much then that's where he would he say like oh that's too tight so he stuck my finger in there and showed me you know see how that's that's kind of tight you got to push down this is like way too loose see that so he said you just want to kind of move that pressure regulator up until you just kind of feel like it's starting to push on there see? it's kind of loose not too loose kind of tight not too tight and because I see that the machine will run without any tension on the belt I would say if you're in doubt use a little bit less tension now we'll make sure that didn't change anything okay so there's a couple of ways you can do the the tension one by the finger pressure and one by just uh, just run on the machine and putting you know turning that up so that there's a little bit more and more pressure see how slow it's running now so you just turn that up until you hear the motor strain a little bit and then turn it back down a tiny bit and tighten it. Now, um, like I said, you don't have to take this off, but you have to loosen both the set screws enough so that when you reach up and turn the hook, you can easily turn that hook without uh, turning anything here which which I am doing now when you put your finger up there on the hook be gentle at first don't put your finger right on top of the hook point and then try and turn it because you'll you'll stab yourselves and of course I've never done that <laughs> but I don't want you to do it as a matter of fact let me show you a close-up picture of the hook point so you know what I'm talking about There, see how sharp that thing is? Wow, it's it's sharp. It'll gash a big old hole in your finger. Not not that I've done it, but you know. <laughs> okay. So, um, I still think I'm a little bit tight on this one set screw because when once you get everything set up top, and I will show you. You have to take a finger and push down on the hook and you know like I got my middle finger on the side on the edge of the hook and then you, you, your thumb has to go here and you have to push them together to make sure oh okay it's doing it 
to make sure it's all all the way up because if you just kind of put it on there and say oh that looks good and tighten it up then you start running the motor you're going to hear this okay so the two set screws are loose okay here's what we set up at the top we have to set the needle bar on the lower timing mark. Doesn't that sound fancy, huh? Okay. And uh, this machine, because it's got this stuff right here, it's going to be kind of hard to show you. But this is a needle bar bushing. Okay, this thing, the needle bar comes in the top and comes out and then goes through this and comes out the bottom. This is the upper needle bar bushing. This is the lower needle bar bushing. And this is the needle bar. And on that needle bar, there's two timing marks. There's two marks circles all the way around etched into the needle bar and they're just a tiny bit of apart like, I don't even think it's a sixteenth of an inch that would be two thirty seconds yeah may maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch but anyway the bottom of those two marks is the timing mark the top of the mark the top of the two marks is how you set the height of the needle if you take out the needle. We haven't done that. So the idea of checking and setting this is you turn the hand wheel counterclockwise which is towards the front of the machine and then it's going to go to the bottom. Okay, And then if you look up in there, you'll see the top timing mark is right up snug to the to the bottom of this. Uh, I got something to point with here. Of this bushing, bottom of the bushing, you'll see the top timing mark snug up. You might just barely be able to see it if you get down and kind of look up in there and your needle bar is clean you go oh, yeah I kind of see a black line there that's the height mark that's how you set the height of the needle right you turn the hand wheel till it's at the lowest point and then that top timing will be snug up against the bottom of the bushing and you tighten the clamp needle clamping needle for it okay now for the timing, you rotate the hand wheel towards the front a tiny bit until that bottom timing mark goes up that tiny bit, 30 seconds, sixteenth of an inch, whatever it is. One thirty seconds would be, what, two sixty-fourths? So maybe it's three sixty-fourths? <laughs> But anyway, you'll see it, and you just rotate that needle bar until that timing mark is usually black because the needle's dirty, and you, you turn the needle towards the front until that's right up, starting to disappear halfway into the bottom of the bushing. That's the height of the timing. Okay, that's where the needle bar is going to be. Now that you have that, we want to see if, where is the point of the hook. Because at that setting, needle bar, turn toy Jew, so the needle bar is on the way up. It's got to be on the upstroke until that lower mark hits the bottom of the bushing. Then your needle, I mean the hook point, should be 
directly behind the needle. Okay? I mean dead, dead, dead center behind it. And my point's a little past. I'm going to show you a picture here in a minute. But when I look in there, I see the point of my hook is a little bit past the needle. Okay? So that's early timing. The, 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 the hook already went by before the needle formed a loop of thread on the way up. I went by early. If I move my hook and check again, if I can see the needle point on the right side of the needle, then I'm late. That needle's going to be gone when the hook point comes by. The thread's going to be pulled up tight and I'm not going to be able to catch the loop. So you don't change the needle height once you've got it at the timing mark. You don't turn the hand wheel. You've got the set screws loose below. So look, you can you can you can turn this uh, hook all day long, right? So you want to turn it so that the point is behind the needle. And there it is for me. So you can't you can't uh, see the needle point. Can't see it before. Can't see it after. That now is in time. So everything is in time. So when that needle pulls up through the thread and it starts forming a little loop from the drag of the fabric, that hook is going to come right by at that second and snatch that loop of thread. Now, you've set it, but now we have to keep it, which means without moving the needle bar, without moving the hand wheel, without moving the hook, we've got to go tighten those set screws. Yay! Okay, but before that, i got to charge my battery. Okay, I'll charge that up. <laughs> so, um, we, we, everything is in place. We don't move it, but we tighten the set screws on the pulley for the hook shaft. Now, we want to be sure that the pulley is all the way up to the bushing. And uh, one way to do that is to gently put your finger on the hook and push it down without twisting it, right? And then push this straight back onto the shaft like that. Okay? And then we'll hold them together and we'll tighten the set screw, whichever one you can get to first or easiest, and not, not super tight, but snugged up good. So then someplace down here is that other one. And, all right, then let's see if we can snug this one up, too, without moving anything. You get the idea. Now, this one I'm going to go ahead and tighten completely. Nice, nice and tight. And then I'll come back to this one and see if it wants to tighten up a little more. Sometimes, now that you fully tighten one, it pushes it into the other a little bit, and, and you're, oh boy, and you're uh, finished. Huh. See this one. Well, I just bought a new set of these uh, Allen keys. There we go. I just kind of hold that. And, Oh, it's tight. Okay. Whew. Sure needs oil, doesn't it? <laughs> so, then, 
to just kind of verify your work, the first thing you want to do is make a visual inspection to see if you did accidentally move anything, which which definitely can happen. Uh, it's happened to me a few times. So I want to look in here and I want to be sure that I still see that bottom timing mark up against the bushing and it looks good to me so let me move this around here and I want to see wow it looks good I want to see the tip the tip of that hook point behind my needle but not past. I don't want to see it on the other side and it looks great. I'm going to show you a close-up picture of this so that you'll know what you should see when it's in time. Okay, and then of course the the acid test, so to speak, or the final test is is that you can you can put the you know you can put the bobbin case back in and put in a threaded bobbin th thread the needle up and then reassemble that and hold your needle thread while you go down and pick up the bobbin thread and pull it up that'll tell you now if you can't you know look again at where the point is on the upswing and that eye of the needle when it's in time I didn't mention that but the eye of the needle is just below the hook the hook point the eye of the needle will be just below the hook point maybe a sixteenth of an inch something like that and uh, if it's off maybe you moved it that can happen and then you want to check where your uh, timing marks are up at the top and if you have to retime it from changing the gear that means that the needle height was probably off to begin with and I've got several needle bar videos remove replace at the height basically when this is all when the needle bar is all the way down and bottomed out the top of the two timing marks would be up uh, starting to go in the bushing okay and if it's not you you loosen this clamping screw right there and you wiggle the needle up or down as the case may be and retighten of course you want to be sure you keep your needle bar lined up you don't want to twist it okay and it seems like there was one more thing I'm not going to permanently put this uh, back on here if you didn't see that part you can look at part one um, uh, of the gear change to see how to remove the the covers and so forth but I, I just want to kind of double check that you you set it to zero before you pull this off and then it should still be at zero when you put it on the way to double check is the spring in there and the flat side find the flat side of this metal tube not not the reverse button but the metal tube and you see office opposite of that you see there's like a little a, a slot in there right there there's a slot well there's the same thing there's like a little bar in here see it by my finger there 
So those two line up the bar into the slot and that should put the spring onto the flat spot and then just push it. Okay, because I, I plan to make a few more videos with this machine and I might wash it, although it looks looks pretty clean inside. But some some things seem tight and and stiff and not and not working, so I figured I would just go ahead like some of the other uh, playlists that I have and just do quite a few things on the machine. Because there's always people who have this model and come to my channel. Um, how do I wind a bobbin? How do I thread a needle? How do I time it? My, my tension's not working. My drop feed won't work. You know, the presser bar, I don't have any pressure. Stuff like that. So I'll probably just continue on with the video since... I mean with the machine since I I have it and we'll we'll see if I wash it or or what. There you go, your new gear and retimed. <laughs> and you can do that. You saw there's nothing I, I mean if I can do that, you can do that. It's follow the directions. It's not a big deal really. It might seem weird if you've never worked on anything like this, but it's just a few hand tools and some patience and you can do it. No big deal. It's real satisfying, you know, when you when you fix the machine and get it running and save it from the from the dump or the or the uh, junk pile or whatever you want to call it. Thanks for tuning in to the part three of the Model 466 gear change. And thanks for watching my channel. Okay, take care now.